lurkers. Hello, you archaeologists. I'm the John Strutt. Welcome to the proximity. I'm having an Alan Wake remastered adventure. And we're about to begin the final episode? I say that in that particular manner, because if we look at the episode lists, there's two, there's, there's two, two extra episodes. So we're not, it's not the final episode, but it is the end of the, the natural story. So let's continue. Get, well, let's do this. We'll, we'll go through here just in case. Let's go. Previously on Alan Wake, I wrote a horror story that has come true. Thomas Zane did the same in the 70s. You will go no further. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story. No one will survive. You knew Zane! Thomas Zane! You're the Lady of the Light in the song! He left something behind to help me. The Clicker. Alan thought of this as he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake. The Clicker in his hand. He took a deep breath and jumped. I can get to her now. I can finish this. Episode 6, Departure. about to explode and the light hurt my eyes. I needed my sunglasses and painkillers to dull the pain. In one of my finer moments of self-deception, I swore to quit drinking. Let's get some sunglasses and painkillers. So Alan Wake comes from New York City. And for years, he was writing crime stories set in New York City. Uh, we have a couple of these flashbacks uh, to New York, and, and that's how New York is present uh, in, in Alan Wake. I love New York. I love it as an idea. Uh, actually, like, you know, writing the Max Payne games that were also set in New York, uh, I had never visited New York in my life. Uh, everything kind of inspiration for it came from pop culture, from movies, uh, mainly. So to me, it's this archetype of a fictional city. The pills worked fast. The prospect of being awake started to seem bearable again. Like super fast, blimey. He likes the with inside as well. The glasses made the world look bearable. Now I could keep my eyes open without feeling like a vampire in the sun. By that name that I, I can't read. You must leave the bedroom. But this is where bed is. You could ah, uh, let's get back to bed. Who even needs to continue? I've left the bedroom. There was a message waiting for me on the machine. Oh, was it like a an ensuite with a fucking washing machine? You fucking what? Or was it like, hang on? Yeah, that's got that door. Listen to no fucking message. I want to find out if there's another bathroom. Your TiVo. If Alice wasn't too mad to record it, 
board last night, but parties are a part of this business. Al, look, I'm saying this is your friend. She's not doing your career any favors by trying to run your life like that, okay? I'll talk to you later, Al. Watch the show! We better go turn on the TV. I've been a guest on the talk show the previous night, talking about my latest book. The show was supposed to be waiting for me on our TV. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We have a great show tonight. I've been talking with the best-selling author, Alan Wake, about his new book, The Sudden Stop. Yeah, good read. Go buy it. No, no, it is a good read. Look, uh, I'm going to be honest here. Is that wise? No. But I'm gonna do it anyway. I got people who give me the lowdown on books. I'm a busy guy. But this one, I actually read from cover to cover. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Wow, thanks. Now, this might be a spoiler for those who haven't read the book yet. Based on the sales figures, the two people out there who haven't read the book yet. <laughs> <laughs> but this last book is all about the death of the main character, the hard-boiled New York detective, Alex Casey. Now, there's been a lot of outrage about this. Why the hell did you kill Casey? What the hell were you thinking, man? Good riddance. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Seven years and six books is a long time. He was a gloomy guy to spend all your working hours with, and it was a good run. But it's time to explore new things. My next book will be a departure from the old for me. <gasps> this man with the chapter. Selfish bastard, always thinking of yourself. Well, you've certainly given us a lot of entertainment over the years. Woo! Now that you mention it, Casey was a gloomy guy. Never had much luck with his love life with the lady. Was that autobiographical in any way? Yeah, no kidding. Casey's lady friends tended to die on him. With Casey, it was all about his pain. No, nothing autobiographical about that. I'm a happily married man. My wife is my muse. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's great to hear. So, how's the publicity tour been treating you? Good. Great. That's Sam Lake sitting next to him. I'm glad to be back home in New York. Well, you've certainly been on the news a lot lately. Lots of parties and, um... You got into a fight with some paparazzi. Oh, man. Well, that guy was really in my face. I lost my temper. I know that wasn't cool. Well, you are famous for that temper. <laughs> well, I did also write several books. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your latest novel is called The Sudden Stop, and it's in bookstores now. Go get it. That means the two of you out there who haven't bought it yet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you tonight. I want to thank all our guests for the evening. Alan Wake, Sam Lake. Once more, do the face for his Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and our musical guests, poets of the world. What does that mean in universe? Because that's just a reference to Max Payne. Funny. I told myself I could live with that. I didn't say anything stupid if that's what you want to know. Okay, Grumpy. You want to ask them something? Are you going to start with me about drinking now? You know what? I should have followed her advice, but suddenly I was angry, mostly at myself. Oh, that was a weird cut. What? Now you can't even talk to me? Well, this morning I was angry because you said you'd be home at midnight and you showed up at 7 a.m. and passed out in mid-sentence. Now I'm over it. Are you angry? This goddamn tour. It's gotten out of hand. Oh, honey. It's almost over, right? We can get back to normal. Then you can start writing again. I'm sorry, honey. Alan, you're not thinking straight. Just take a shower and go back to bed, huh? Yeah, you're right, honey. I'm sorry. Once this is over, let's go away together. A vacation. Just you and me. Some peace and quiet. So the way they do their models, like, because they, they seem like accurate models, but they're not always so flattering. The clicker was the key to the cabin. I had to return to Cauldron Lake to save Alice. I'm going back to the lake to finish this. I'm going to write an ending to the story in the manuscript on my own terms to make it all right. Why can't you just write it here? 
The last page is still in the typewriter. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Barry, take her gun. Miss Weaver, close the door when I leave. Why does he need to do this alone? Oh. Good luck, Al. See you later. When I got out, it was warm and sunny. I had flicked the switch of the clicker. Had it done this? I didn't stop to question it. I had to take advantage of the sunlight to get to the lake. On Zane's page, I had stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, about to use the clicker. That's where I was headed. Surrounded by the beauty of the Pacific Northwest landscape, it was hard not to let doubt creep in one last time. I could still chalk everything up to a dream, a delusion. I had enough imagination to make up something like this, having been in the cabin all this time, trapped in a story inside my head, gone mad from grief over Alice's death like Hartman had claimed. There would be no way of knowing. I told myself it didn't really matter. My course was set. Still have our gun? They're still talking about New York, or, you know, has this inspiring, almost like a magical place. Is that uh, obviously now with control, we are back in New York. Have you and not aged? Again, and and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if if down the line we would have more games set there. But this idea of not having visited New York uh, while, while writing Max Payne games is kind of a thing overall. Like, like to this day, I have never uh, been in Washington State wilderness uh, in any of the small towns. Yes, I've been to Seattle multiple times, but, but not to actual uh, inspired uh, lo locations that have inspired Alan Wake. Maybe we should. Just out for a nice relaxing drive. Um, they drive on the right in America, don't they? So I saw one of those tweets today and it was about Death Note and it was uh, like a four-way political spectrum map and it was about detectives who could understand that it, who could in, uh, what a Death Note was and who could solve the, the case. And like in the top left was Columbo. Oh, and I'm like, Columbo wouldn't fucking solve the case. I love Columbo. But he'd immediately fucking die. Like, what Columbo does is he badges like somebody for half an hour. He immediately knows who does it. There's the death, and and talks to them for half an hour until they give enough information. Like Kira would immediately put like his name down in the book and murder him. He puts his, he shows the first thing he does is he shows his badge. I don't understand how Columbo is supposed to solve the case. <laughs> a link between us always would be i could feel its presence again getting closer i will kill your wife 
Oh, but I'd like my wife. Stop throwing those at me! I feel that there are many different ways of doing research uh, for riding. And it, you know, sometimes, obviously, it's great to visit the location where the story is set. Uh, but I don't feel that that's, that's necessarily something that you need to do. Or, in some cases, it can even start to kind of mean that the story you want to tell uh, ends up not working because you know too much about this location in our stories the inspiration comes from popular culture more than anything that's fair enough click the clicker again The Dark Presence was no longer trying to capture the writer so he could create the ending it wanted. The writer knew too much. He was too strong. And he carried a weapon left behind by Thomas Zane, something that could hurt it. Now, the darkness was doing everything in its power to simply stop the writer from ever reaching Cauldron Lake and the dark place it came from. That noise, I, I, like I've been in cars, I feel like I've never heard this noise. I only ever hear in racing games. The... Maybe it's American cars. Nice and bright and cut my car, to take it. It's the Majestic. Hop in and say hello. So in the 30 minute television series, uh, some of it's set in the Majestic. There's an advert for Watery, which is the name of a place. They've got a, f oh, they've got a finished uh, 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 sauna and the Moose Fest and Soami Hall, built by Finnish settlers. Based on the signature in the motel register, Agent Nightingale had stayed here, in room number two. Hmm. I guess I should go visit room number two then. A couple of words about the Birdleck Cabin, which is a very central, very mystical location in, in Alan Wake. There, there is an obvious connection to Slavic folklore with with the witch Baba Yaga, who who has this cabin on bird. That would explain why that's and, used and, properly. And we have the two round windows that are kind of eyes of a bird, and and in the study where Alan Wake ends up riding, uh, we have a taxidermy owl uh, between these windows. So so a lot of these references to uh, this bird. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I feel that for every Finnish person, the idea of a summer cabin and, and these magical uh, uh, sunlit nights of summer 
hold this very, very special uh, place uh, in their minds. I thought the owls were just because Twin Peaks, but see, all the Finnish stuff I'm obviously not going to get immediately. Or possibly at all. Examine that last. Yeah, this bit I don't remember, and the reason why I don't remember it is because I didn't play it when I did the VR. Um, it's interesting how much I did, like, do... Like, I remember bits and pieces of it, but I don't certainly don't remember meeting Night, going to Nightingale's This had obviously room. been the room where Agent Nightingale had stayed when he hadn't been busy harassing me. That's good advice. Does Nightingale have a car? Not that car. Gonna go. Uh, I don't know. Oh, the light. Checkpoint reached. Thanks, Tom. Hello, Moose. I think I have to fight the poltergeists.
was I supposed to get past that? I'm a little low on health. Climb. I don't want to climb. Come on. Ah. Oh. Fuck.
Well, that was doing amazing until that happened. I'm waiting for his health to come back up. No! Oh. oh, that was just mean game. Okay, that, that was, that was my fault. That was my fault that time. But the time before that was a dick move by the game. Yeah, I feel like they improved upon this a lot in Quantum Break.
Then the game, game just drops me down another fucking hole. So the bird like cabin is this mystical place, and and in terms of like lore uh, that we start establishing in control uh, through the lens of what Federal Bureau of Control thinks about these things and how they see these things, uh, the cabin is definitely a place of power with with mystical properties. Oh, I made myself a girlfriend. of ink everywhere. Yeah, well you're lightweight. could have done it with some The bottom of Cauldron Lake was a graveyard of things the lake had claimed in one way or another over the decades. 
The dark presence brought them up in its wake, scattering the rotten waterlogged hull of an old boat here, the remains of a long ago crashed airplane there, trees shattered under the impacts, the earth groaned, it didn't even notice. You don't want me to have those extra bullets. up there There's nothing Nice night for it Oh, free wax it took to kill me. This is in the UK, I'd be able to get out of the right side of the car.
in here. In the end, Barry wasn't going to shoot Sarah. They both knew that. Once she had no chance of catching up to Wake, Barry gave up the gun and sat down on the floor, shielding his face from the merciless glare of the well-lit room. I don't think I'm ever going to see him again, he said in a weak voice. Sarah didn't have it in her to be mad at him. Besides, he was probably right. Yes. We'll find out. In like 15 days. Guess we're going up there. Um. So already in the right place? It kind of makes sense that the light source is there then. Oh, I feel silly about getting... Ah, should have just driven back down, shouldn't I? Why did it give me a second car then? Well, hopefully my first one is still there. I've got an extra page because I went the wrong way. It's not in a great condition. Oh, did I do all that and just forget to press the button that opens the door? I had to get the gate open. Fuck's sake. Maybe I confused the monsters by walking too far away. Get my fucking way! Ugh. 
I know there's an alternate way out, but still. There's somebody coming down to greet me. That's nice of him. Legitimately don't remember this at all. Thrashed. 